back to Monica's place. I'm Monica and this is my scrap room. This is the second part of a three-part series where I'm going to show you how to alter some ordinary items into some wonderful treasured keepsakes. On this episode, I'm going to show you how to alter this pair of flip-flops into this great album full of summertime memories. My little grandson just turned one the other day and my daughter had a pool party for him. The weather didn't turn out great but the party was a lot of fun. So her theme was all about Nemo and flip-flops and the pool. So I captured some of those memories in this great little flip-flop album. I'm going to journal on here all about the big day and uh, spots for photos and I'm going to show you how to make this. start with the construction of our little mini album. As you can see here, I've got some rings here covered in ribbons so that it can easily open. The pages are made with cardstock that's been covered with printed paper on each side that makes it quite sturdy and easy to flip and fold here and turn, sorry. And you'll notice one thing too that I can just place the book down like that and it can store flat. In order for that to take place, we have to remove one of the thongy flippy flop things from our shoe. So what I want you to do is just go ahead and take some scissors, cut that toe part section out, that part falls away easily, and just continue to do that with the rest of the flip flop. So when you put your book together, with bottoms together, you'll have the design of the flip-flop for your back cover. Now to create the holes for the rings, I started with a paper piercer and I poked through both flip-flops so that I know that the holes will be in the same place on both the front and back cover. So I made one at the bottom and one at the top. And then the next part might be a little bit tedious but easy enough to do. You're going to go where you've made that paper piercer hole and kind of make a circle around it that you're going to carve out. Then I took an exacto blade and just kind of dug around until I made a hole. There's the hole I created with my paper piercer and my X-Acto blade. You're going to want to keep digging at that until it's the desired size that you want it to be so that your rings will fit in quite nicely without touching any of the rubber. Once you get the hole carved out for the top cover, you might want to take a black marker, place the bottom cover underneath, and just take a black marker and poke it all the way through to the bottom just to make sure that your holes are going to line up. Now we're going to start working on the inside pages of our book. So what you're going to want to do is take the bottom flap, put the right side down on top of some cardstock, take a marker and just trace around. Your tracing will look something like this. It's like a foot with no toes. So go ahead and cut out the amount of cardstock pieces for every page you want in your book. Once you have your cardstock cut out, you're going to place it on four sheets of printed paper. Okay, we should have all the elements for the construction of our book. We have our flip-flops with the top taken out and the holes dug through. We have four pieces of printed paper for the top side of our pages and four pieces of printed paper in the opposite direction for the flip side and our four pages. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the printed paper one to the top and a completely different print for interest on the bottom half and then trim those up. 
I'm just using an ordinary glue stick for this process. There, I've got all four pages covered on both sides. And this also would be the time if you want to ink your edges, go ahead and take some ink and go around the outer edges of your pages like so. Once you get all your pages inked, take the top of your book cover, place it on top, mark it with a pen where you want the holes to go, and then take your crocodile, put all four pieces together, and punch it all together so all the holes are in the right place. There, now we're going to go ahead and do the embellishments on our front cover. If you'll notice here, I have a chipboard circle here, and I sanded it up, stamped on a cupcake and the word happy, used the rub-on letters to do the word day, and I have a little flower here with a brad that has a number one on it. There was only one number one in the package, so what I went ahead and did is took another brad. It had a, num a zero on it, sanded it off, and I'm simply going to take some rub-on numbers. going to take the number one and just rub that on, and there I've got another number one brad. I want you to see how great that little rub-on worked on that sanded brad. You can, of course, add any number you want, but it was his first birthday, so I used the number one. I'm using the crocodile to punch a hole in the rubber of the toe part of the flip-flops so I can add my brad there. So we're just going to take that little number one, put it in the center of a flower, and stick it right in the toe part of the flip-flop. I'm going to distress another one of those chipboard circles that I got from a kit at my craft book store. I'm going to ink a cupcake on it and the word happy. Now I'm going to take some rub-on letters that are in the coordinating colors and just rub on the word day right at the bottom. There, I glued happy day on the front and I almost made a mistake of covering over my hole for my ring, so make sure you don't do that. I used my adhesive gun because it's a really secure adhesive and that's not going to go anywhere. I have this great kit from Pebbles Inc. I love their stuff. I'm going to go ahead and grab the initials, my grandson's initials, and stick them on the bottom of the front cover. As a finishing touch, I had a little button element at the bottom here, and I found this cute little rubber ducky button, and I thought it's perfect for this little uh, flip-flop. Now you can go ahead and decorate the inside pages however you choose. And then finally, you're going to assemble your album with the metal rings. Our book is all put together with the rings and the pages. The last element to add is ribbon around our rings. There, there's our finished album. The ribbons from Pebble Zinc that I purchased at SavvyAndSassy.com just finished this off beautifully. Summer 2007 is just about over, so why don't you create yourself a cute little flip-flop album like this to preserve your summer memories forever. On future episodes, I'm going to dedicate a full program just to creating different kinds of mini albums. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to tune in for the last episode, part three, where I'll show you how to alter this Band-Aid tin into a great little mini card set. Don't forget to tune in.